What's up guys, Mac Speed coming at you with another Cringy Machinist episode. This episode, we're gonna delve into exactly what it took to take my drill press and turn it into a milling press, a milling machine. Preface, I am not a machinist. I have no machining experience whatsoever, except for the good machinist videos that I have seen on YouTube, such as this old Tony and Blondie Hacks. If you guys haven't checked those channels out and you have an interest in machining the way that I do, definitely go over to those two channels and check out how real machinists do real machining. This episode of The Cringy Machinist, not professional whatsoever. I am barely scratching the surface experience-wise, but my needs for machining aren't that grand either. Honestly, the only thing that I currently machine is AN fittings that go into valve covers. I machine down the back threads so that the, the threads on the back side of the fitting don't come into contact with the valve track once they're installed with the valve cover. So effectively, I'm just cutting down a fitting from its initial height to a smaller height that'll be less of an interference fit. This doesn't require any crazy tolerance as far as surface finish is concerned, and it doesn't really require me to get into any like exotic cutting materials. So I think this is a good place for us to start. All right guys, well, without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get right into what it took to take my drill press and turn it into a milling machine, as well as what its actual capabilities are in its current setup as a drill press milling machine. Let's get into it, guys. All right guys, this is the Rockwell Delta radial drill press. This type of Rockwell Delta drill press was actually produced somewhere between 1970 and 1980. Uh, I don't have an exact year on this guy, but I haven't dug that far into it. I'm sure I could figure it out if someone wants to know. The uh, basic 10 year range there, they were all produced about the same and about to the same quality level. It's uh, before you in this absolutely useless configuration to me, strictly for thumbnail purposes only. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll kind of uh, set you guys down for a moment and set things back right. All right, guys, I just want to go ahead and walk you through the uh, Rockwell Delta drill press that you see in front of you. Um, the Rockwell Delta drill press in front of you was sourced off of Craigslist for approximately 85 bucks. Now, this specific drill press was produced somewhere in the range of 1970 to 1980. And given the condition that it's in in front of you, it just speaks to the build quality of the older stuff. This may not be a brand new unit, like something from Harbor Freight or something from Ryobi, but I definitely think in quality it outclasses either of those op offerings you know, just based on, on the, the old school engineering that went into this type of a unit. If you kind of look down here, everything is heavy. Everything is cast iron. Everything has this like old, gnarled feel of toughness to it. The graduated uh, stops, the threaded stops that you see there came with this drill press. Uh, everything that you see intact on this drill press itself came with it except for this vise. This vise was sourced off of eBay, it's a cross slide 3 inch, and I paid uh, $26 for this used as well. I'm a big fan of giving things a second life if that, if that thing that you're trying to repurpose still has good value. So for me, even though this was a used cross slide vise of a fairly small capacity, because I have a very small experience level, it seemed to fit my, my drill press at that point as well as, as my personal taste very well. I've had nothing that I needed to do to the vise either. I just kind of tightened up the slides via these adjustment points right here as well as on the other axis. And you know, just to kind of test the mill out, when I first got this thing going, I went ahead and faced the jaws off just so I could get a nice square surface between both the, uh, the, the jaws of the vise and the bottom of the end mill. Now what we've effectively done is we've kind of squared up the best I can between the bottom of the end mill and the top of the jaws. Hopefully that'll allow me to be more precise as far as the leveling of other work pieces that I put in there. But you can see at this point that they come together very, very nicely. That machine finish we're all looking for, right? Definitely an upgrade over what it was. Even though the slides do have a little bit of rust on them, um, they've also got a pretty good coating of some uh, nice axle bearing grease. It's probably not the optimal thing to put on there, but it is what I had on hand and it does make them slide fairly easily. You don't have to get real ham-fisted with this at all to get the adjustment out of it that you want. You can see the uh, bezel there is very finely graduated. You can see all of the degree marks very clearly. 
and the bezel itself has that old school kind of stainless steel look to it that honestly I think is really 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 cool you can't recreate the patina of time and this thing has it in spades now other than machining these vice jaws here the only other machining that I have used this for as stated previously in the video is for machining AN fittings just so you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about I'm gonna go ahead and machine one of these fittings for you and show you exactly what uh, what kind of result you could expect from a drill press style, style mill now this has absolutely no digital or automatic anything on it obviously every single thing is manual from the uh, cut depth to the you know feed rates on the material that you're trying to feed into the cutting tool everything is going to be a, a manual thing so I have to pay very close attention to what I'm doing while I'm doing it so that I don't break tools off so that I don't have you know the work end up destroyed because I'm being too aggressive with it whatever the case may be typically for cutting aluminum because I have a choice between 700 and 1250 at the bottom end of things I like to keep this around uh, the 1250 mark and I've come out with some decent surface finishes uh, at that RPM now I usually make two cut passes to cut the fittings that I need to cut down to the correct size instead of one deep pass and I really take my time with it because I know that not only are the cutting tools expensive but the fittings themselves aren't cheap either so if I get ahead of myself I'm just going to end up costing myself more money in the long run than I really need to if I had just been patient in any event guys let's get a fitting set up here in the vise and we'll go ahead and make some chips all right guys what you have in front of you here is an eighth inch end mill and the nice clean flat jaws of my cross slide vise let's go ahead and get a fitting set up in there and uh, we'll go ahead and change our cutting tool and set our cutting depth and start making some chips for this machining operation guys I'm just going to be using a standard 5 16 high speed steel square end mill um, it's a four flute design they were very very inexpensive like two bucks each for a set of six of these guys and I got them off Amazon they showed up to my house uh, in two days flat regardless of the Chinese EM flu so let's go ahead and get this chucked up alright guys now the one thing I will say about this Jacobs chuck is it is the same Jacobs chuck that came on this drill uh, drill press from the factory and there's no bolt or anything holding it into that taper inside the spindle so I don't know whether or not I got a, a good one that's just held together at really tight tolerances or I've just been lucky up to this point but for whatever reason I've had no problems with the, the chuck actually falling out of the spindle itself um, even though it is just a taper fit with no bolt or anything like that holding it in place knock on wood hopefully it continues to uh, maintain that type of performance but in the future I would like to go ahead and change out to a different style chuck and fit and figure out a way to mechanically fasten it in what we can do is just set the fitting into the jaws of the vise and it's tall enough to be able to protrude enough to where I'm going to be able to cut off what I need without setting any type of a uh, you know a stand underneath it as it were the one thing I really strive for because I know my my fixture is not too good here with this cross slide vise is I really crank down on that fitting and make sure that it's super tight in the vise alright guys I got my gloves on I got my mask on let's go ahead and make some chips
All right, guys, here we are, ready for our second pass. Let's get after it. Alright guys, let me kind of bring you in close here so I can show you the surface finish here on this fitting. The uh, surface finish that we were able to achieve is totally smooth to the fingernail touch. I can run my fingernail over these and just barely catch. And honestly, for what I'm doing, this surface finish is totally acceptable. All I'm trying to, all I'm trying to do here is reduce the height, not necessarily uh, gasket to this surface. Alright guys, let me leave you with some final thoughts on converting a drill press to a mill. First off, I would say if you're able to source an older, stouter piece of equipment, you're probably better off than going out and buying something new, whether it's a Harbor Freight thing, whether it's, you know, a, a, a Craftsman, you need, the Craftsman stuff's kind of fallen off over the years. Uh, no, matter, no matter what you're looking at, I really believe in the, uh, the value of old tools that were built well originally. This definitely falls into that category, and if I had to buy it again, I would pay almost up to double, maybe even 200 bucks for a drill press like this, knowing how stout it's been, knowing the capabilities of it, knowing how good the tolerances have been between that taper and the, and the, uh, the quill itself, and how effective it's been for the purposes I need it for. Having said all of that, this XY vise, not sufficient for long-term use. This was kind of like what I got into when I started thinking about doing this process but definitely not the optimal solution for someone looking to do, you know, more precision type of a type of a machine work. These screws on these cross slides are very coarse. They don't allow me to have a very fine range of adjustment the way fine threaded screws would on an XY table, which is going to be my next move. Honestly, I would like to get into an XY table, but I don't want to get into something too terribly cheap. I want to have a good range of adjustment between the X axis and the Y axis, but I'd also like to have fine enough threads to where I'm able to get real precise motion on them. Not having a lot of backlash, also high on my priority list. As you can see, there's a whole lot of nothing that happens both directions when I start to give it you know, any kind of input. If we could eliminate that in the next one we get for this, probably going to do a lot to improve the quality of the machining we're able to turn out. All right, guys, as I've stated before, this is not how to use your drill press effectively as a machinist type video whatsoever. I have little to no experience as a machinist, and honestly, getting these fittings machined is just about the extent of my experience as a whole. Wow, look at all those chips in there. Even though machining like this is very humble and it's it's you know a, a very small place to start in the grand scheme of things, I think that it's it's good to try and build a foundation of experience, even if you don't necessarily have the knowledge, so that you know 
what not to do if you do it incorrectly, but also what to keep doing if you happen to land on the correct answer the first time. I'm going to continue to make these cringy machinist videos and we'll see how my own experience level kind of evolves over the time that I do it and maybe you guys can learn what not to do through my own mistakes that I'm sure that I'll make along the way. Alright you guys, if you like this video give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more with that bell notification so you can stay current on what we got going on, on the channel as well as when new videos are coming out. Alright guys, if you really like this video make sure you share it so somebody else can see it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.